Hey everybody, Big Daddy here, and we are back in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and with the release of Title Update 5, of course, as the headliner, we received Fade Talus, the Black Dragon of Black Dragons. And since his release, this big old long boy has been serving up a side of red hot death to the entire community. But it has been a few days since his release, and a lot of the community has gotten through this fight. However, if you are still struggling with him, if you don't know his moves, if you can't access him yet and don't know why, or if you just need some helpful tips and pointers along your fight with Fatalis, then this is the perfect beginner's guide for you. So with if this guide is well received, I will do a more advanced guide later on in the week. But in this beginner guide, we are going to go over things you should have done, things that you need to do before you fight Fatalis, his different phases, as well as his different attacks that he has in each phase. And then towards the end of the video, I will give you guys several helpful tips for this fight, as well as a couple build templates that I personally have been using with great success dealing with this beast. So if you are having a hard time accessing Fatalis, you need to have done everything up in Iceborne subsequent to his release. So you will need to have faced both Rajang and Stygian Zynogar in the Guiding Lands. You will have need to have faced Safi Jiva, and you will need to have unlocked and completed a Latreon. So how do you start this Fatalis questline? So when you load in to Celiana, right beside the bounty board, you will see the excitable A-lister. So you will have to talk to him, and then you will go with him, some dialogue with him. You'll be transported to the council table where you'll have a whole mess of dialogue involving basically every important figure in the Celiana area. Now after all this dialogue here, you will be given a new special assignment called Dawn's Triumph. Now this fight is going to have you going up against another Alatran in the Secluded Valley, but this one is going to be severely weakened and should only take you a couple minutes to complete. And then upon dispatching this Master of the Elements, you will be... Drop back in Celiana where you will have to talk to the excitable A-lister again, where you will get pulled back to the council table, and then shipped over to Astera where you will have to talk to the commander, where he will assign you the quest called the Black Dragon. Now I'm not going to spoil this for you guys because you really should watch the cutscenes and listen to the dialogue, but at the end of all that you will be dropped off in Castle Shrade and you will have to do this part of the fight specifically solo because you will have the excitable A-lister with you in Fatalis' little arena. At which point you will have to do enough damage to him where you get the plate cutscene and then after this you can either exit or you can continue the fight, but this is where we'll pick up the phases of the fight here. So if you go back into the special assignment you will of course have access to a full four player party and you will be able to start off in what we will what we're calling phase one of his fight so as you may notice in phase one as you fly into the arena there are a couple of important things that you pay attention to so depending upon where you land on the far side opposite of the gate you will see two cannons that are placed up on some wooden scaffolding you will have a ballista that will be to the right of that and then you will have another ballista that will be up on a little ledge straight ahead on the left side of that platform so as far as his attacks go in phase one, he has a plethora of things that he can use against you. And later on in the different phases, he just kind of amplifies these attacks as well as adding a couple more. So starting with phase one, he has a straightforward breath attack that he will shoot at you in a line. He has one where he will kind of rear back a little bit, drop his head backwards, and then he'll drop it back down forwards. Uh, either sweeping from right to left or left to right. He has another breath attack where he'll kind of arch his head and stare at the floor and puke a pillar of flame onto the floor around him, which unless you're towards his back legs, you will take some residual AoE damage from. He also has a walking breath attack where he will walk slowly forward and swing his head from side to side, breathing a line of fire down in front of him. As well as having a breath attack where he will either breathe down his sides if you're beside him or he can breathe in front of him and they can go from any distance from short to long. When he does his attack, you can take damage from the initial breath attack itself, or you will see the floor glowing orange underneath of you, and you will take damage when the floor, floor erupts from beneath your feet. So onto his fireball attacks. Now for the most part, he will shoot three fireballs at you. So he'll shoot one, and then he'll shoot another, and then he'll shoot the third. They will be staggered a little bit, but they do shoot a little bit faster if he's aggroed. He has one charged fireball shot, which you will hopefully have enough time to get out of the way of. And when he does this, when he's aggroed, he will always follow up with a, like, he'll back hop in the air and then do, like, a diving tackle towards you. So for his physical attacks in Phase 1, he has an attack where he will kind of slide and swim towards you on the floor. 
He has a bite attack that he can use to go from one side of the stage to the other, have seen it happen. And then he has a single bite attack where you'll see his mouth kind of flame up around his jaws that he will do towards you. So after you do enough damage to him in phase one, you will have to go to that same plate on the far side of the screen that you had to do in the cutscene when you first entered the special assignment. And afterwards you will be in what we call phase two. So in phase two you have access to the entire arena minus one big thing. So first and foremost, you will notice that you have access to your roaming ballista. Now if you're looking at your roaming ballista from the middle of the stage to your left will be another cannon, as well as you will now have access to your one-shot binders. So in phase two for his attack, he has everything that he had in phase one. So to add on to this, he now has the ability of flight where he will do that same, uh, the same vom fire vomit attack. He can do that while he's in the air. The sweeping attack, he can do shoot the same fireballs, as well as doing another diving tackle towards you when he goes to land. And at this point, he will gain two more physical attacks. One being an attack that has a ridiculous amount of range, in my opinion, is his tail swipe. He will drop it on one side of his body, either in a straight line, or he will drop it on one side, and then he'll swing it all the way to the other side of his body, and he this can curl around towards the front and still hit you. So to add on to that, he has a belly flop attack that he has now gained, as well as a punch attack where he'll hit the floor down in front of him if you're too close to him. And then for the most deadly thing that I see people get caught out by in his entire fight, he has a habit of doing this attack back to back to back later on in the fight once you're in phase three, but he'll lay down on the floor and he'll shoot a fan of flames across essentially the entire stage. Now this will drop your health rapidly, whether you have a ton of fire resistance or not, but there are little boulders or pieces of the castle that are stacked um, in a couple of different locations on the stage. So you can hide behind those if you cannot get towards the, the back half of his body in time. So once again, once you do enough damage to him here, he will fly back into the background of the stage again. And at this point, you'll have to run all the way up to the front of the stage and climb onto the ledge where you will have where you will get into this little alcove where the barricade is and somebody will have to hit the switch so you don't get parted. So after this festival of events, we are going to be in what we will call phase three and beyond or phase three to kill. Now at this point, one of two very important things is going to happen. While you were fighting him, hopefully you have been focusing on the head absolutely as much as possible. If you haven't, then he will gain a purple flame attack, which where his flame attacks in general will do twice as much damage. If you have broken his head at least once, you will not get the purple flame. He will continue to do the same amount of damage that he had done previously. So it's very important to focus on his head. But in phase three, his breath attacks gain a much wider area of effect, as well as his fireballs. He can now shoot huge charged fireballs. And he has two new breath attacks. One where he will kind of sweep it along the floor and it'll kind of pop out underneath of you in different diagonals away from where he's facing. And then the second one, which is a much more difficult attack to read unless you know exactly what you're looking for he does a 360 degree flame attack where he will start kind of like facing the direction he's facing he will sweep a little bit there and then he will turn all the way around his entire body with his flame breath and it is devastating so the other big changes in phase three is after you hit phase three a couple minutes after you hit that you will gain access to the Dragonair. You want to make sure you have his head weakened for that so that you can absolutely do as much damage as possible. And at different increments, as you drop his health down, it's like every 10 or 15% of his health that you drop down, he will do the same fly, like he will do the same ultimate attack that he has been doing where he washes the stage over in an ocean of flame. Now, at this point, you're going to have to move towards him to get out of it and make sure you don't die. Now, if you are unfortunately at the far end of the stage because that's what he likes to do so like let's say you're up by the dragonator he likes to go all the way to the front of the stage where he went initially at the end of phase one so what you're going to want to do for this is you're going to want to run at diagonals do not run straight towards him or you will most likely not make it if you're that distance away from him but if you run at diagonals he does spray it down in a cone so more often than not if you run at the diagonal run towards the, the sides of the stage you will more than likely survive and as i said he will more than likely do this three times 
as you get him closer to death, and as you get him closer to death as well, he will attack a lot faster. Like, he is a very mobile, very active, very angry dragon in the first place, but when he's, the closer he gets to death, the more it becomes a literal fight for his life. And his final new attack for Phase 3 is a devastating yet awesome pen move where he will literally make you a part of him. Now, you can probably avoid this or at least get, avoid getting stuck in him if you break his chest. However, this move follows along the lines of his lore that when he kills hunters, he melts them down and adds them to his scales. So it is glorious to see this put into action. They did a great job with this move specifically in his tool set. And more than likely, if you have any health missing before he attacks you with this, you will probably get carded. So continue doing damage to him until you finally kill him. And what a relief it will be. I had such a hard time with this monster at first. I was extremely salty for the first day and a half. I spent approximately 10 hours fighting and failing, fighting and failing, killing this guy in between doing it solo and in four player groups until I finally got in a group that had great communication skills and we were able to beat it on the first try. So now that we've covered his different phases and everything that you can expect from his fight, let's go over some helpful tips and tricks for the fight itself. Now, in phase one, we're going to start here. So as aforementioned in the beginning of the video, you have the two cannons that are up on the wooden, that wooden scaffolding there, the wooden stilts. You're going to have at, want to have at least one person load those cannons, wait until Elatron is in a still position, and then fire those cannons at him. Now, you want also specifically for this person to have heavy artillery, because if you do, it will take uh, somewhere between seven and eight cannonballs. As long as you hit him, you will knock him down, and that will give you a free damage period to go to town on his head. Another huge tip, and probably one of the biggest, most important things for his fight, is Dragon Pop. Now you want to have at least one person with a light weapon, whether they're healing for you or whether they're doing damage for you, whatever the case is. You're going to want to have at least one person with a light weapon to weaken whatever part you can on him because that will drop Dragon Pods. Now, at any point in this fight, it is going to take two Dragon Pods to stun him. So if you hit him with those two Dragon Pods, he will kind of do like a... a almost a backflip animation. He'll like lay backwards and swing his head from side to side. You can also do this with enough dragon element on your weapons if you stack the element on him enough. But pods of course are the most consistent way and they can literally save yours or a teammate's life on multiple different occasions during this fight. So if you don't take anything to heart in this video other than this one tip, it will definitely help you. Now for phases two and three, the same heavy artillery person is going to be integral for your fight because you will gain access to the rowing ballista in phase two. So you want that heavy artillery person to hop on that and do as much damage to Fatalis' head and chest as much as he can. Because if you're unable to knock Fatalis down by breaking his head or doing hitting him with the cannons, you can knock him down if you shoot him in the chest with either the roaming ballista or the regular ballistas that are placed around the stage. I know it's hard to believe, but blisters are actually useful now, just in this fight. However, the chest is going to need to be weakened to have the greatest effect, and it is going to take a bunch of ballista ammo, hitting him dead in the chest to get that knockdown on him, but you can definitely do it. And let's not forget the second cannon, as aforementioned, that it's going to be beside at the one end of your roaming ballistas for the same heavy artillery person to use. So you can definitely get multiple knockdowns on this monster using just the tools that are placed around the stage for you. It is definitely possible. It's something you want to make sure that you focus on to make your life in hunting this guy easier. Third tip, and this is more of a warning. He cannot be flashed. He cannot be KO'd. So if you're thinking either of those are going to work for you, it won't. But you can use sticky ammo to break his wings. However, that's about its only use in this particular fight. So for phase three, if you have not broken his head by phase three, you are going to want to make sure that you use your one-shot binders from either of the ballistas that are on the stage. Now, the one-shot binder locations are you will have one that's beside the ballista. If you're looking at the gate, you're going to have one ballista that's going to be on your left, and the one-shot binder is going to be right there at it. And then the other one-shot binder is going to be near the platform where the cannon is by the gate on your right-hand side. And especially if you can combine using these one-shot binders with using this roaming ballista, as long as the head is tenderized 
at, towards the end of phase three, once you have access to the roaming ballista again, hopefully you used it in phase two, you will more than likely get a head break, a first or second head break, or be very close to both. Fifth tip, we all know that the Dragonair can hit twice, so you have damage that you can do to a monster from each particular spike that comes out of the wall. With Fatalis specifically, you once again want to make sure that his head is weak before you hit him with this Dragonair, because it will guarantee a knockdown. You also want to make sure that you have him lined up so that you can hit him with both spikes and you don't miss one or the other because you're going to miss out on a huge chunk of damage because these spikes both do almost 6,000 damage to him apiece in a four player hunt. However, if you're standing up there waiting for the Dragonator or you're on any of the platforms where any of your tools that are located around the stage, i.e. your cannons or ballista, he is going to focus on you hard at one point or another so he will shoot fireballs at you or charge fireballs at you. So do be warned, you probably will want to make sure that you have a temporal mantle or something on with you when you go to any of these areas. And now for the final tip, and this one's kind of a minor thing, and once again is more of a personal preference, but guys, put some fire resistance on your armor. I have seen so many people just get one shot by this and that and whatever else. More attacks that you probably shouldn't get one shot from, but I've still seen it happen and they're all fire based. This guy does 90% of his attacks are fire. He does physical attacks too, but for the most part, the greatest majority of this fight is going to be you not getting burned to a crisp. So do yourself a favor and make sure that you have health boost, make sure that you have fire resistance. At least 20 with your armor fully upgraded to make sure that you can survive the onslaught. So now, as promised, I'm going to show you guys three builds here that I've been using that have given me a lot of success in my fights against him both in duos with evil as well as in a four player lobby so this first build is going to be what i like to use the majority of the time which is switch axe switch axe zero sum clutch claw is so so safe on him for so many of his attacks a lot the majority of his breath attacks do not have a hit zone on the sides of his face so if you can attach to his face and give him a lobotomy with your zero sum it's a good way to do huge damage while still not taking as much damage for you. But as you can see, I do have two points of recovery up just in the base armor set. Now this allows you to recover a lot more damage per tick as you rapid tap into his face, as well as having the aforementioned heavy artillery, which is always a good thing to have with him and fire resistance. So the second build is a long sword build. Now this is almost exactly the same as the switch X build minus one thing. I have a shaver jewel in there because Beans as this is one that I made while I was playing with Evil, and Evil loves to use Switch Axe, which is considered a heavy weapon. The Long Sword, of course, is a light weapon and therefore can drop pods. But it's also nice to be able to weaken on that first hit so that you don't have to worry about trying to grapple onto him, getting another weakening attack on him to make sure that you have the weak point that you need. And then this last build is a very good healing build for this particular fight. As you guys can see, I'm using four pieces of the Cult to Roth armor, which is going to give me both guts and free meal secret. And then I have the fire resistance as well, even though Kulv does have a pretty significant weakness to fire, the fire resistance that I have on this takes me up to 39, where I'm still able to take one and a half to two hits of his fireball before I tart. And being as I also have speed eating and free meal secret with this, as long as your teammates don't get one shot, you should have no problem healing them through just about anything that Fatalis does to them unless he combos them or catches them in that fan breath. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my beginner's guide to Fatalis. And as I said at the beginning of the video, if this guide is well received, if it gets enough comments and views and likes, I will do a more advanced guide in a couple days. I will wait and see at that point what you guys think about the information that I presented to you. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, and if you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we will see you on the next one. Good luck out there, hunters, with the Black Dragon.